Hey everybody, and welcome to Libromancy, the podcast about the magic of books. Today I'm talking about Deadly Assessments, the fifth book in the Fred the Vampire Accountant series by Drew Hayes. So let's assess the magic. Again, I, I do love these books. I'm your host, Josh. Don't want to forget that, as I have many times before. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, from the get-go. But as, as I've said before, these books are great. They are fun. They have lots of good stories. And I think Drew Hayes' writing has only gotten better the farther we've got in these series. From the first book, where every scene, every story was different, to this book, where every scene is different, but is also part of one whole story being told. Uh, it's just so much better, so much more in-depth, and it's so great. So again, there are five stories in each of the in this book, and they are all part of one larger story. Now, one thing that I'm really liking is that his titles are always so spot-on with what's happening in the book. The first one, just obviously about him becoming a vampire. The second one, on death and taxes, the third one, bloody acquisition, acquiring some more people, the fourth one, fangs of freelance, dealing with his freelancing, and now this one, deadly assessments, so we're obviously assessing some things. So uh, I think we're just going to have to get right into it. Again, though, such good fun reads, such lightness. Uh, you can see a little bit of, you know, higher level stuff if you want, but they're just good, clean fun. So start with uh, story number one, and this is going to spoil the whole book, so just be warned if you're listening. Fred is at a trade show trying to promote his accounting software services, and he needs to pick up some more accountants. And so he's running this trade show, and he's got Richard, and then they are putting on a sale, and then he meets Deborah. And Deborah informs him that she is part of the Blood Council from the, the leadership of the vampires, and she's here to evaluate him. And, you know, run against his, see what, see how he stacks up against life. In the end, she gives him three criteria. Uh, the first one is if he will rebel against the blood, the blood council. And she says, you know, I think you're good on that one. That one, you're not really a rebellious type. The second one is if you are unfit as a clan leader, then you'll be killed. And the third one is that you, you know, you have this non-vampire clan this is the first time it's ever been done, and we want to evaluate and see if this is worth keeping or if we need to stop this immediately. So she introduces herself, tells him that she's going to assess him, and then during this trade show, she just picks off her his help one by one. She gets Richard into a fight, she makes Amy's potion go a little haywire, and she just is testing, De uh, testing Fred, Deborah is testing Fred, to see how he reacts and what is... His choices are what choices he makes. And I just love Deborah because she's so prim and proper. And you know that she's like horrendously old in the vampire sense that she has power beyond belief. But she's not power first. She's brains first. And she has like a, a pleasant conversation with him the whole time. And uh, it was fun seeing that. And we also learn something. This is cool. One of the reasons why vampires are so feared and so powerful in this world is because the age of the vampire affects the power gotten from blood. So if you had two vampires, one that was 10 years old and one that was 100 years old, and they both drink the same blood, the one that's 100 years old would have more power from that blood than the one that was only 10 years old. And so that was just new, interest, interesting and new. And they meet, they talk, they, you know, they have a working relationship. And then Deborah says, oh, and by the way, I'm going to be your bodyguard while this assessment is going on. And he's like, why? So make it easier for you to kill me? And she's like, oh, no, I would never kill you. First, I'll terminate our contract, give you some time to say goodbye, and then I'll kill you. It's much more simple that way. So it's just, I love how proper she is. You know, she's not prone to rashness or anything like that. She's just like, okay, this is how it's going to be. And if I do decide you have to die, you know, I won't just straight up kill you. I'll give you time to say goodbye and set things in order, and then we'll kill you. So, just super funny. Um, this next book, Bodyguard at the Meeting, eh, this one wasn't one of my favorites, but it, it was still good. It was still impressive. This one, Asha, who we remember is our lawyer friend that knows uh, Fred and has kind of been induced into the supernatural world. She calls him in for some accounting work because they found some embezzlement and it's all hush hush. And so they go over there. Fred goes over there with Deborah and 
They are signing the non-disclosures, and then it turns out that the man they are coming to meet, Phineas, has died. And I like this story because we actually see Fred for the first time, like, accepting and, like, using his vampire history and his vampire legacy, where he, you know, Deborah instructs him, hey, you have to drink this blood from this guy because you need to be able to see kind of the magic, and if you drink his blood, you'll have a little bit of immunity to the charms and the spells that he's cast that are still lingering. And so he does it, he drinks, he can see it, and it's really a learning experience and a good learning experience for him that this is what he is as a vampire. So then, of course, we learn that the reason that this meeting was so secret and hush-hush was because the man they were meeting, Phineas, is not just a regular maker of things, he is a sex toy maker, of course, because the supernatural world, I'm sure, has its kinks just like everybody else does. But very funny learning that and seeing that. And they're working through the embezzlement and trying to figure out who did it and who most likely killed him. When they meet the assistant who made the automatons, made things move that didn't, he decided he just wants more power and he tries to kill them. And they stop him. Deborah really shows Deborah's power that she's able to easily destroy his creation and almost him. So it was interesting. Just less accounting slash stuff I would have preferred a little more of. So our next one, though, Lesson in the Woods, story number three out of five. This one is a good one. This one is Deborah takes, says to Fred, hey, we're going to go out on a trip. Uh, Pack what you need. I'm not going to give you any more details than this. You'll be safe. I'll be with you. But we're going to la go for a night. And so they're driving him away. And Fred's like, she's like, what'd you pack, Fred? And he's like, well, you know, I got some spare blood. I got this flashlight. I got kind of this generic use kind of stuff because he has no idea what he's doing. He's like, yeah, that sounds great. Let me let me take that stuff. You know, and when was the last time you fed, by the way? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then she takes his bag and sets it to the side. And then she kicks him out of the car, like literally boot to the chest, through the door, and he falls off a cliff <laughs> and into the forest. And it was so funny because it was so unexpected that she would do something like that, but you totally know that that's something she would do. And she was very precise and meticulous about it. So it wasn't like a spur of the moment, oh, you offended me, I'm going to kick you out of this car. It was so funny. So he wakes up sometime later and she said hey this is a test this is your training i need you this is we're gonna make you feel the hunger the vampire hunger capital h for the first time because your whole life you've basically just always bought blood and you don't know these things you've never been taken on a training so she's like i calculated this you should be pretty low you're going to go and I loved it. He teaches him how to feed. He really puts himself forward. It's like, okay, I gotta make these decisions. He fights a bear. And he, he fights a bear and wins against the bear, mainly by drinking its blood until it passes out, which was hilarious. And we learned that uh, vampires can drink animal blood, but they usually don't because it tastes. That was so funny. And then as they were headed back, he had, you know, made his progress and they were working their way back. They actually come across his clan looking for him. And so it really showed their camaraderie that they are a team together. That was a great one. This next one, the fourth one, Issue in Escrow. I would have to say that this is probably my least favorite of the five stories that we have here. This book, Deadly. I didn't feel that it had nearly anything to count. It was just kind of not even a heist, but like it has that kind of a heist feel. Basically, what happens is that Gideon says, Hey, I want you, Fred, be my escrow agent for this jewel that I find, this very precious, powerful, magical jewel that in mortals, when mortals look at it, it makes them want to use it and then it kills them. So be careful. And you hold it in escrow, I'll pay him half. You bring it to me, he gets his other half, you get a, a percentage. And so eh, it felt good. I liked it. If the story wasn't bad. There's plenty of action. There's plenty of running and hiding. But it just wasn't that exciting for me compared to the other parts. Of it. There was hardly any real accounting. It was just kind of a fight slog the whole way through. Which if you're down for, you're down for. And like I said, it wasn't bad. It wasn't written poorly or anything. It just doesn't hold up to the rest of the books in this story and the books in this series, in my opinion. But, of course, Deborah's here, and she's challenging him. 
to come up with new and better ways to do things. So that was cool. That's kind of it, though. All right, let's look at the next one, the final one, the verdict at the trial. And I did kind of forget to mention this back in part one, but Crystal has been gone this whole time because you know that she wouldn't have stayed quiet about a blood council agent coming to assess her husband, future husband, hopefully. But she has been working with the Fae, you know, remove her betrothal to September, to Tem, September promised, and so she's had to do all these challenges, and the Blood Council actually, you know, said, hey, let's work together, do this, we'll do you a favor, now you get, you'll take her over, we do our thing. So they get called in, and it's for the whole clan to come and help her finish her her last test. The last test is basically stop a bunch of constructs that she's created. So, of course, before they get to the Fae, they, they shed all the, their iron, they go in, they're talking, and of course, they're about to start the test, and they do, and this is where Deborah betrays, but in quotes, because it's not really a betrayal, betrays Fred. She stabs him with some iron, with some silver, which he's immune to, so it doesn't really matter, but she doesn't know that yet. So he pretends to go limp, and she says, hey, you know, you need to just lead them and let them do the work. You can't be there all the time. So, you know, he assesses them, of course, and says, okay, here's where you're failing, here's where you're failing, let's move this around, and then they perform well. But, of course, these constructs are undying, being powered by magic, and so they come back. And this is where Fred has had a trick that not even Deborah knew. That Lillian had iron in a Ziploc bag, not iron, yeah, iron, because silver is bad for her, iron is bad for the Fae. She had iron Ziploc bags in her stomach that they cut open, put it in, and then so shut and healed it, you know. So they open that up, they get the iron out, and they decimate these constructs. And, you know, at this whole time, Fred is kind of deducing things between himself, and, you know, but the Blood Council and the Fae that these favors have been taking place. Then he's actually just talking with Prudence, which, with Deborah, and Prudence is her title. And he's like, I don't know anything. Can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, these titles and the Blood Council? And she's like, yeah, there's five of us. There's Prudence, Control, Wrath, Pride, and Wisdom. Now, let's think about what these ones are. Prudence, obviously, is her, and that is... The position that deals with the long-term effects of new things or old things coming to light. So she's the one they go to long-term decisions. She is kind of the future thinker of the Blood Council. Next we have Wrath. I, I'll give you two guesses, and one of them doesn't count. Wrath, obviously, is when they go to war or to fights. Wrath is the one in troll. Wisdom is all about the science and about understanding their vampirism and controlling it and making it better. Pride is the vampire of the blood in charge of making, creating, keeping alliances under control and properly managed. And then you have Control, who leads the blood council, usually just solves disputes and is the ultimate tiebreaker. So I'm glad we got to learn about this. Obviously, if you haven't guessed it yet, Fred does pass his assessment that he proves that he is a worthy clan mem clan leader. He proves that his clan members are worthy. And even though they're non-vampires, they are incredibly loyal. And that this is going to be a benefit for everybody. Um, she also drops the hint that she knows that he is to Silver from when she stabbed him. And, you know, he's healed already. He's like, yeah, Silver doesn't bother me. And she's like, well, tell me everything. And he's like, well, it started with Gideon. And, you know, she has the look of surprise, which was just hilarious because in this whole book, never been taken by surprise. And in this last little bit, she just, oh, what? That's what happened? So uh, it was great. Again, I really enjoyed the story. I, like I said, there was one that was kind of lesser for me, but the other ones were still good. And I definitely recommend them for you. So. That's going to wrap up my discussion of Deadly Assessments by Drew Hayes. Thanks for listening. Thanks to David Hillowitz for the intro and outro music. Please, if you enjoyed listening, like and subscribe wherever you listen. That way other people can find it and spread out to more people. If you have any questions or comments or things you want me to read, send those to LibromanticPod at gmail.com. And remember to assess the magic of books.